Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Guido Molinari. I'm the managing partner at Prison Group. Uh, over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to present this uh, new initiative, the Blockchain Fellowship that we announced this week. Uh, so before I get into that, um, very briefly on us, as, as mentioned by uh, Seb, we are an economic consulting firm based in New York. Uh, we were founded by a group of Harvard trade economists. We have been heavily involved in the industry in education programs like the MIT Sloan uh, business education program that uh, was launched last year. We have done education for portfolio companies of many investors in the space like Polychain Capital. We have done a lot of work on research and I'm going to focus this presentation on what we want to do next on the research side. Uh, and then we have, you know, consulted with many projects, uh, you know, more the, our more known product is our economic audit. And earlier this week, if you were at the Crypto Economic Security Conference, you might have uh, heard that we announced a now joint offering between our economic audit and the security audit provided by Trello Bits. Uh, Trello Bits is a security firm based in New York uh, that we have known for a long time. Uh, most of our clients are our clients, and we decided that you know, it would be better for their security engineers and our economies to come together in a joint offering. And this is you know, called Mainnet 360. Uh, again, uh, this is not going to be covered in the presentation, but happy to talk about it afterwards. Um, so, what is the state of the industry today? Uh, so blockchain as a sector has been able to attract a significant amount of talent from both the legal and the technical community, right? Plenty of lawyers, cryptographers, software engineers that have, you know, are working in blockchain. Uh, however, it has failed to catch the attention from the economic one. Uh, and, um, you know, our competition per se has not been standing still. Uh, you know, these are a few headlines uh, this is from uh, last year from Quartz. Uh, traditional large tech companies have been, in the meantime, hiring economists in droves. Uh, as you can uh, read here, you know, Uber, Secret Weapon is its team of economists. Or we can go in on CNN and read Amazon gets an edge with its secret squad of PhD economists. Um, and, you know, this was sort of summed up in an article that Susan Athey, she's a professor at Stanford, and Michael Luca, who was a professor at Harvard Business School, published last year, uh, they did a research study on uh, economists working in tech, and you know, Harvard Business Review published you know, their article, Why Tech Economists Hire So Many Economists. Now, if we put this in comparison to what, uh, what are we doing as a blockchain sector, this is sort of what the picture looks today. Uh, you know, we have a lot of ground to make up for. Uh, again, Amazon has a team of over 150 economists uh, on staff. Microsoft, Google, Uber uh, have very large teams, and even if you go to, uh, you know, smaller tech companies, they have, uh, you know, at least a dozen economists working uh, with their business team. And as an industry blockchain, you know, we have less than 10 PhD economists working in it. Uh, so what can be done to fill this gap uh, in terms of talent? Well, we want to replicate a successful model. Uh, so we have looked at the PhD fellowship program that large tech companies have run for the last decade and a half. Uh, this is a quote from Microsoft Research. Uh, as you can see, over the last 11 years, Microsoft has placed 142 fellows from PhD programs, not only in economics, but in other fields, but many of them were PhD in economics. And similarly to uh, Microsoft, many other large tech firms run PhD fellowship programs. Um, so what is, again, you know, the solution that we have um, announced this week is that we're launching an ecosystem development fellowship program to fund applied economic research for the blockchain industry and hopefully develop, you know, some of these researchers into future economies for the industry. Um, so we have uh, been able to recruit two very, very highly esteemed people to co-chair this fellowship program. Uh, Professor Bank Olstrom is going to be our academic chair. Uh, professor Olstrom is a professor of economics at MIT. Uh, he co-won uh, the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2016 together with Oliver Hart, who is one of our senior advisors, who is a professor at Harvard. And, you know, Banked in his long career as an academic has been focusing on many areas uh, of, uh, that are very relevant for blockchain networks, including principal agent theory, money market opacity, and, uh, you know, a lot of issues pertaining to governance. Uh, now, Bank is going to be the academic chair. We are going to have an industry chair, who is uh, Preston McAfee. Uh, Preston is one of our senior advisors, and he was the former chief economist at Microsoft. And he had a very long, distinguished career, both in technology 
and in academia, and I think the key point of, you know, uh, that should be highlighted, he, he launched very similar programs at Yahoo 15 years ago when he was the chief economist there, and brought with him this fellowship program at Google and at Microsoft. So he has a you know, long experience running a PhD fellowship program. Of course, in those companies, the fellows were placed in business units while, and I'm gonna get to it in a second, in this particular fellowship, it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna be placing the fellows in different ventures across, across the blockchain industry. So uh, Preston and Bank are not gonna be alone running this. Uh, we have a selection committee of four people. Uh, two are our founders, uh, Dr. Kathy Barrera and Dr. Stephanie Herder. Uh, Dr. Barrera was a, um, a professor at Cornell University, and she's the former chief economist at ZipRecruiter. Uh, Dr. Herder uh, was uh, a manager at Boston Consulting Group and a former actual researcher at Microsoft Research. Uh, and with them, we're gonna have uh, Professor John Horton from MIT. Uh, professor Horton has an interesting background before becoming a professor at MIT. He was the chief economist at Upwork. And we have Nicole Morlika. She's a senior researcher at Microsoft, and she's, she's a, actually a computer scientist and has been very heavily involved in the Microsoft Research Fellowship Program. Uh, she really helped identifying technically re relevant questions for the PhD students in economics to, to study while in the Microsoft program. So uh, how is the fellowship gonna work out? Uh, we're gonna open the application process in January, and we're gonna have PhD students from, from universities applying and then the selection committee with the chairs are gonna select the fellows that are gonna be then placed starting next summer into uh, blockchain ventures. And throughout the summer placement, they are gonna identify you know, key questions relevant for the project teams. And they are going to basically then go back to their respective schools where they're doing their PhD programs and complete the research from September until the next spring. And then the research is gonna be published and then hopefully long term, some of these PhD students, as they graduate from their schools, they're going to potentially enter the workforce in the blockchain industry to you know, fill that gap that you've seen in the previous slide and really try to bring more of them as, as full-time researchers and economists to blockchain ventures. Um, so this is sort of the structure. Uh, now, what are they gonna be researching? We have sort of identified several categories, uh, and these are the sort of macro, uh, topics, uh, but you know, uh, all from consensus question to DeFi, from governance questions to uh, protocol layer, uh, and you know, there are some simple uh, topics here. Uh, of course, the research question themselves are going to be much more detailed, but like you know, these are problems that we've seen, you know, auditing dozens and dozens of companies in the last couple of years, you know, issues around consolidation of validators, for example. So, how do I get a marketplace for my validators to be you know, less concentrated in just two or three pools, for example. Uh, what are the drivers of token value? So what are the levers that you know, can be identified from an economic standpoint to drive value in a token? And then incentives for participation in governance. You know, many of these networks are seeking to have a distributed form of governance. Now the question is gonna be, how do I get people to actually be incentivized to show up for the meeting, actually vote, uh, and so you know, there are a lot of you know, interesting research question that could be around this type of topic. Um, so where are we gonna find the fellows? Uh, you know, wh what is the talent network that we're gonna leverage? We have, you know, deep connections in a lot of the top PhD economic programs across the country and many of the actually tech companies that have done these programs before. Uh, so the idea here is that we're not expecting a PhD student at Yale in this, you know, third year to wake up one morning and say, oh wow, uh, you know, blockchain, I, you know, uh, I really wanna do this. Uh, you know, that is probably not likely. So we are gonna go through their trusted advisor, through academics that, uh, you know, they respect and basically tell them that, you know, the fellowship exists. And again, this is mostly gonna be the first year. The program is gonna run for five years. So we are hoping that as the first year is successful, then, you know, the students, as they go back to their PhD program, they're gonna tell their peers. And then slowly, you know, over a five year period, this is gonna be really something that is considered as a very solid option compared to the existing fellowship you know, in more you know, traditional large tech companies or compared to other options of research that this PhD student might be you know, undertaking over their summer break. Um, so again, uh, the network is extremely important for you know, uh, making sure that we do get the right talent for the fellowship. Um, so 
what are we going to be doing in terms of community development, right? You know, the purpose of this program is not just to produce research for the research sake. You know, we don't need more research to be published in academic journals. Uh, that's not really going to help the project teams uh, and, bench and people building um, projects in the space. So we are going to have three initiatives um, to really try to bridge the gap between the research being done and produced and the actual industry practitioners. Uh, so the first one is quarterly research forums. So we are going to have the fellows, once they have completed their placement over the summer, identified the research question, and then gone back to school and starting actually you know, going through the data and producing the research, they're going to be hosting probably you know, a few months in once they start adding some preliminary results, uh, a one or two day research forum open to uh, the industry uh, to present, you know, okay, I was, you know, in a, in a DeFi project over the summer. This was the question, the research question we identified that was a particularly big problem for the team. We have analyzed this data over the last few months, and here are some early findings that, you know, if you're also working DeFi, you could, you know, it could be beneficial for you to, uh, to uh, take notice of. Uh, and then we're going to have an annual summit every year, so this is going to be in the spring. Uh, the goal of the annual summit is to present the findings of the research as it's completed and then announce the next class of fellows that are going to be placed in the following summer. Um, and I said, again, this is going to start summer 2020 and going to run for five years until 2025. And then the third thing is education events, right? So, and this is education towards the economic community at this institution that I showed you before. We want to provide a bridge for blockchain ventures, both in the in permission and permissionless space, to put themselves in front of you know, um, economists and educate them about the importance of blockchain and why dedicating you know, research to this sector could be very beneficial for them. And you know, to uh, quote uh, Professor DiMaggio, who presented at the Crypto Economic Security Conference on Monday, uh, you know, he has been heavily involved in the Terra project, which is a project in the payment space out of Korea. And he said it was a very fascinating because, you know, you can get a lot of data and, uh, you know, it is, it is something that, you know, he encouraged many other economists to do. So really trying to bridge the gap uh, both ways. Um, so what is the vision by 2025 once we have gone through, you know, the five years of fellowship really is that that competitive gap that you saw before has been, you know, closed, and we've been able to attract, you know, a great class of researchers and economists to the industry, and really build the ecosystem for the future distributed economy that we are all, you know, in the efforts of building uh, at the moment. Now, um, I guess the big question is, how can somebody get involved in this initiative? There are various ways. Uh, the first one, and obvious one, is that if you have any friends former colleagues uh, that are pursuing a PhD in economics, uh, definitely let them know uh, about this. Uh, there is going to be a formal way to nominate fellows or for, or for people to apply. This is going to uh, be open in January. Uh, the other way, of course, is uh, funding. Uh, if you are interested in sponsoring a fellow or no organization that might be interested in sponsoring the initiative, we are you know, very much in um, uh, you know, open to, to, to other partners. Uh, you know, the more financial resources we can provide to students, the more fellows we can, of course, place and the more research that can be produced. Uh, so that will be, you know, very beneficial for, for the industry. And then the third one is, if you are running a project and you feel that there are, you know, economic questions that your team is struggling with that might be relevant to other projects, uh, definitely, you know, consider potentially hosting a fellow. Uh, you know, reach out. We are going to collect, you know, um, uh, interest over the next few months, and then in the spring, there's going to be a nomination committee uh, that is going to basically select which projects are going to receive fellows in summer 2020. And then the fourth one is that you know, you know, might, you might not be running a project, but you might be, you know, on the research side of the industry, and you might have faced, you know, a certain question that. Uh, you thought would be particularly interesting for, uh, you know, uh, PhD students to, to research and, you know, you can reach out to us. We would love to hear from you in terms of, you know, topics that you feel um, could be tackled through this fellowship program. And, you know, I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. Uh, you know, that covers, uh, again, a high details, um, the program. Uh, 
open for question now. Uh, these are our contact details. I can be reached at guida.prisongrow.io. If you want to you know, learn more about the fellowship, the best way will be to sign up. We have a monthly newsletter. Uh, and we're going to be, of course, publishing more about this on our social media accounts. Um, so this is, uh, you know, various ways that you can learn more information. And I think I have a, you know, a few minutes left. So happy to take any question you guys might have at this moment. Any any questions? Yes. So, um, uh, and, and you mean they're not, because they are students at uh, undergraduate level? Undergrad or upstairs school or the impact and the Yeah. Yeah, so um, we haven't, to be honest, really thought about it yet, but we're, we welcome, you know, suggestions. Um, you know, the... The, the goal at this point is really to sort of break through the um, mostly indifference that has been among the economic community about this technology. Uh, so, so we, you know, but, but I would imagine that, you know, there might be opportunities to get involved uh, around the research topics. Uh, we haven't defined that yet. So, you know, feel free to, you know, send me an email and uh, uh, we'll happy to take it offline. Thank you. Yes. Correct, yes. So then, so the administrative team, so do they actually work with some of the professors that maybe they couldn't get into, or do they work with the actual students? Or do they work with the teams or do they work with the students? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, oh, can you go back to the slide? Sorry, yeah. Um, so let me let me just go back here one second to, yeah. So so the, the, the way it works is that the, um, the, the fellow is placed with the team for the summer, and basically during the summer, their goal is to understand from the team as they interact with them every day, what are the key problems they're facing, right? And then on a weekly basis, they check in with the chairs and the people in the selection committee to say, okay, how's it going? You know, what, what are the problems? Could this be the good research question? And what we want is to produce research that is relevant across the industry. So is this maybe an issue that we've seen in other projects? And then by the end of the fellowship, the research question is identified, right? So then the students go back to school, and then they basically, with the data they collected, they start doing the actual research, right? So we, you know, generally to produce good research, it's gonna take like six to nine months. So we're hoping, you know, they are placed between June and September, September they go back to school, and by the spring we have, you know, maybe we have some preliminary results before Christmas, but like by the spring the actual thing is published. Um, so yeah, so it's it's sort of like both, right? You know, it's sort of we need guidance from the uh, selection committee, but of course we need to know what the problem is from the team, right? I mean, we don't know what the problem. You know, we don't want to run this program like you know, there's many research programs. That, you know, you give money to a research in a university and they have to find a problem, but they don't really know what problems are relevant for industry. So we, for us, it's very important that the problem is actually relevant and we find a solution that can be applied. So yeah, I don't know. I hope this answered. Any other question? We have about a minute left. We're actually going to have to leave it there. Okay. Uh, we're running a bit late. And, okay. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. But feel free to.